So you're watching this lesson here, right now, in the present. But at some point in the past, you decided you wanted to learn Spanish. And in the future, you plan to be fluent in Spanish by practicing your Spanish through videos like this one that you're watching right now in the present. Great Scott. I know, this is heavy. As you can see, tenses are an essential part of our daily speech. After all, we need them to talk about the things we've done, the things that we're doing, and the things we want to do in the future. Now, tenses in Spanish go a little beyond past, present, and future. In fact, there's over 20 tenses grouped into four moods, and we're going to cover all of them in this lesson. So let's head on out of the present and into the future, a land where using the proper tense in Spanish is no longer a mystery. Vámonos! It takes some time to get really fluent with Spanish verb tenses. We'll give you an overview of all the knowledge you need in this lesson, but it's up to you to keep practicing and sharpening these skills. We're gonna cover a lot of information, but rather than going into every specific detail of every tense, this lesson is meant to show you the differences between the tenses so you'll feel more comfortable and knowing when to use the correct one. Before we learn the Spanish tenses though, there's one thing you need to know. There are four Spanish moves for conjugation. We have indicative, subjunctive, imperative, and conditional. Depending on what you're trying to express, you'll use one of these four moods for your verb, and each mood actually has its very own tenses. Within the indicative mood, you're going to have simple tenses, perfect tenses, and progressive tenses. Within the category of simple indicative tenses, we're going to see present, imperfect past, simple past, and future tense. When it comes to indicative perfect tenses, you can see that there's a present perfect, a past perfect, and a future perfect tense. Finally, for the progressive indicative tenses, there are only two subcategories, present and past. Now let's take a look at the subcategories of the subjunctive mood. With this one, we're going to see simple tenses and perfect tenses. Within the subjunctive simple tenses, there's present subjunctive and imperfect subjunctive. Then within the subjunctive perfect tenses, there are present perfect subjunctive and past perfect subjunctive. And with that, we've already reached the imperative mood. Within this category, we're going to see affirmative and negative conjugations. But with this category, there are no subtypes of tenses to learn. Lastly, our final mood will be the conditional mood, which has two tenses, simple and compound. I know, I know, all of this info may sound overwhelming, but I'm going to break it down in very simple terms here. So without further delay, Let's begin. We'll start off with a very common one, the indicative mood. This mood is used to talk about reality or facts. Using the indicative mood, we can talk about and describe actions at the moment they occur, whether it's the past, present, or future. An example sentence of the indicative mood would be, yo estudio español, I study Spanish. Now, within the umbrella of the indicative mood, you have three type of tenses, simple, perfect, and progressive. Now, let's start off by looking at the simple tenses. The first type of simple tense we have within the indicative mood is the present tense. As you can probably guess, we use the present tense to talk about things that happen now, like current situations, facts, or realities. For example, saying, yo estudio diseño gráfico, I study graphic design, would be in the present tense. Next up in the category of simple tenses within the indicative mood, we've got the imperfect past tense. You can use this one to talk about past actions, things that were habitual in the past, actions that were not completed in the past, or characteristics and emotional states that took place in the past. Yo estudiaba derecho, pero luego cambié a arquitectura. I studied law, but then I switched to architecture. This would be an example of the imperfect past tense. Moving to our next simple indicative tense, we have the simple past tense. How does simple past tense differ from imperfect past tense? Well, for simple past tense, you use it when something that happened in the past had a clear start and end date, or was completed. The sentence, 
Yo estudié Derecho en la Universidad de Boston. I studied law at Boston University. Is a fantastic example of the simple past tense because your studies had a clear start and end date. So now we've covered the present and the past tenses within the overarching umbrella of the simple tenses of the indicative mood. Next, we'll look forward to the future. When you think about this future tense, you can basically just think of anything you'd say in English by putting the word will and adding a verb. For instance, yo estudiaré derecho cuando termine la secundaria. I will study law when I finish high school. Is the sentence spoken in future tense? One common method for expressing the future in the indicative mood is to place voy a before an infinitive. However, this is not really its own distinct tense since it just uses the verb ir in the present tense. It's kind of like when you say you're going to do something in English. We've got a whole chart of indicative mood simple tense conjugations for the verbs ir and comprar in the full guide linked in the description below. For now, let's move on to the perfect tenses within the indicative mood. All the actions expressed with perfect tenses concluded close to the moment we're talking about. All the sentences that are expressed in the perfect present, past, or future need to use the auxiliary verb haber with the action verb always in its participle form. The auxiliary verb and the participle verb can never be separated no matter what. Here's a quick formula that will help you visualize the structure of these types of sentences. To put it simply, all you need to do in order to use the perfect tense is to learn the conjugations of haber and know the participle of your action verb. Now that you know the basics of the perfect tense, let's quickly knock out how you can use it for the past, present, and future. We use the present perfect tense when something started and ended in the past, but it happened very close to the moment we are talking about. What's really cool about this tense is that it's an easy one to use when you know the present form of a verb, but haven't learned its past conjugation yet. An example of the present perfect tense would be Yo he estudiado para el examen esta mañana. I have studied for the test this morning. The indicative past perfect tense, on the other hand, is used to talk about an action that was completed before another action, or to talk about actions that are implicit and happened in the past. For example, Yo ya había estudiado esta lección antes que el profesor le explicara. I had already studied this lesson before the teacher explained it. Finally, the future perfect tense within the indicative mood is only used when talking about future events that will take place before another future action. These are things that haven't happened yet, but we are very sure that they will happen. Here's an example of what I mean. Habré estudiado para el examen cuando mi mamá llegue. I will have studied for the exam when my mom arrives. Once again, We've got a chart on all the conjugations of ir and comprar in the perfect tense for the past, present, and future. And you can find this chart and many others in the full guide linked in the video's description below. All right, we're almost done with the indicative mood, I swear. You're a real trooper for paying attention thus far. We've now learned the simple and perfect tenses of the indicative mood. Lastly, we'll learn the progressive tenses. We use progressive tenses to tell that something is happening at the moment or that it was happening at the moment we're describing. The equivalent in English is when verbs end in ing, such as reading, playing, and cooking. The Spanish word for this verb form is called the gerundio. So the formula for progressive tenses in the indicative mood is simple as this. Estar conjugated plus the gerundio plus a complement. For the present progressive tense, use it if you're doing something right now. For instance, yo estoy estudiando ahora, no puedo salir. I am studying right now, I can't go out. We use the past progressive tense when something happens in the past while another action is taking place. In these cases, we use the past progressive tense for ongoing action. So, an example sentence might be, Yo estaba estudiando cuando mis amigas me invitaron a salir. I was studying when my friends invited me to go out. Woo! That was a lot of indicative mood, right? <laughs> You're a trooper. 
Remember, if you want to learn how to speak Spanish, make sure to check out baselang.com, where you get access to unlimited one-on-one -on -one Spanish classes with native speaking teachers all via Zoom. Now we're ready to move to the next mood, the subjunctive. The subjunctive mood is used to express desires and hypotheses. We use it to talk about things that are not real yet, which might be possible, or even things that never happened, but we wish they had. If your brain is starting to hurt trying to remember the differences between these mood types, worry not. We've got a complete video guide on the Spanish subjunctive, so check it out for a more in-depth explanation. It'll be a great help when you're trying to learn these tenses. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the simple tenses of the subjunctive mood. The subjunctive simple present tense is used for hypothetical situations. For instance, you might tell your friends something like, Probablemente yo estudie hasta tarde el viernes. No creo que pueda salir. I'll probably study late on Friday. I don't think I can go out. The present subjunctive is also very commonly used to ask politely for something in the form of a desire. So, if your friend is a diehard Swifty, you might say about them, Quieren que escuchemos el nuevo álbum de Taylor. They want us to listen to Taylor's new album. Next up within the simple tenses of this mood is the imperfect tense. This one is used to express the theoretical situations which would have happened in the past to politely express desires and to say hypothetical if then phrases. We use the imperfect subjunctive when we allude to previous experiences or unlikely events and possibilities. Rather than knowing that something happened, we may think or hope that it did. Here's an example. Quería que vinieras a mi fiesta de cumpleaños. I wanted you to come to my birthday party. Now let's take a look at perfect tenses in the subjunctive mood. Just like we saw in the indicative mood, the perfect tenses of the subjunctive mood are used with the same straightforward formula. A personal pronoun plus haber conjugated plus a verb participle plus a complement. Within this subjunctive perfect tense, we'll look at the present and the past forms. The present perfect subjunctive is very useful when you want to explain something that started or happened in the past, but still affects the present or will affect the future. Something like, Espero que hayas estudiado mucho para tu examen de admisión. I hope you have studied a lot for your admissions test. Next up, we'll cover the past tense within the perfect tenses of the subjunctive mood. We use the past perfect subjunctive to talk about events in the past that you could not do. It is a way of regretting not having done something. You may find yourself speaking a sentence like, Yo hubiera estudiado diseño gráfico, pero ya no había cupo en la universidad. I would have studied graphic design, but there was no place at the university. And that's it for the subjunctive mood. Whew, that was fast, wasn't it? Our last two moods will go by quickly too, I promise. So strap in and let's keep learning. If you're enjoying this lesson so far, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any educational Spanish content. Number three on our list is the imperative mood. We use the imperative mood to give orders and commands. Anything that is an instruction, written, or spoken uses this mood. This is a very key concept that you'll use in your everyday Spanish skill set. So make sure to study up on it before going in any further. The good news is we've got a video explaining exactly how to use commands in Spanish using the imperative mood. So check it out. Since the imperative is used to tell people to do something, it is only used with the personal pronouns tú, usted, ustedes, and nosotros. There are actually two forms of imperative conjugation, depending on whether the command is in the affirmative or the negative. But for now, we won't go into more heavy detail on that. Right now, let's go ahead and see an example sentence. Estudien más y hablen menos. This means study more and talk less, which is a great tip. Unless you're learning a language, <laughs> then you should study and talk. Regardless, we're ready to talk about our fourth and final mood. The conditional mood comes in at our number four spot. We use the conditional mood to express a possibility, a desire, or a request. To learn more about using conditionals in Spanish, check out our full video on the conditional tense. It's a great introduction to a subject that can be a little tricky to master at first. Basically, if you were to introduce a possibility in English using words like could, would, should have, or 
probably, you'll be using the conditional for these situations in Spanish. We could also use the conditional to talk about hypothetical situations using if clauses. If one thing happens, then the other is likely to happen. There are two tenses in the conditional, simple and compound. Let's see them in action. In the simple conditional tense, we only have one action verb conjugated in conditional. For instance, check out the sentence. Por supuesto que yo estudiaría diseño gráfico si quedaran cupos en la universidad. It translates to, of course I would study graphic design if only the university had places left. This is a perfect example of simple conditional tense. But what about conditional compound tense? With a conditional compound tense, we conjugate the verb haber in conditional and then follow it with the action verb in participle. This looks something like this. Yo habría estudiado, pero me quedé dormido. I would have studied, but I fell asleep. Woo, give yourself a well-deserved pat on the back because you've just finished learning all the Spanish tenses. You'll definitely want to check out the full article on the tenses linked in our description. Not only does it have more details and examples for each category, but we also have a huge table of example sentences for every single tense. The main thing to remember from this lesson is that each tense has its own use in Spanish and that they're all accessible as you progress in the language. And if you want to practice Spanish grammar with an experienced teacher, why not schedule your first Baseline class today? At Baseline.com, you get access to unlimited one-on-one -on -one Spanish classes with native-speaking teachers all via Zoom. Try your first week for only $1. For more practice speaking in Spanish using different tenses, check out our video on the Spanish preterite next. It'll go hand-in-hand -hand with what you just learned in this lesson. As always, thanks for watching and have an amazing day.